back up there. Are you guys ready to rock and roll? Yeah. Okay. We have a farm. It's so exciting when you get to bring a group with their original lead singer back, you know? And uh, I've been all over, the, I've been really blessed because I've been all over the country with these guys. We've done shows in Arizona and uh, down in Florida together. A few, I mean, and everywhere we go, people tell me they came to see him. They come to see him. He had one of those unmistakable voices. The song came on, maybe you never even heard the song before, but when that song came on, you knew it was him. And then he went on to have hit after hit after hit. He's been all over the world. I called him a few months ago for something, and he said, you know, it's four in the morning because I'm in Australia, you know? And he's, he's famous all over. He goes to Europe. He'll spend a month touring all over Europe. So it's tough to get him for a concert here in the United States, and we managed to do it tonight. Are you ready? Yeah. Without another further word, I'm going to turn it over to these guys behind me and let them... Rock and roll with you! Yeah. 
yourself a round of applause. You guys are ready to sing wonderfully. Sing all night with me. <laughs>
How has life been treating you all? Good, since I saw you last. When was the last time we were at the stand? Do any, any of you know? I was trying to think of when it was. I know that we were here. Oh well, that's what happens when you get old. <laughs> well, you're not old. I'm old. I don't know what that is, but it happens, you know. So we're going to take you to 1969. I got to tell you just a little short story about it's a, it's kind of a, uh, a testament to a love song. We were working on a cruise. My I was standing off the side of the stage. My wife was sitting down here in the front row talking to a couple. And they, they were raising champion golden retrievers, according to my wife. And they could not get these two champion golden retrievers to be interested in each other. So they decided what they would do was play music for them. So they got the music machine, they put it in the kennel, and they chose one song. It happened to be this particular song. And they said they were now proud owners after playing the song for the puppies, the, the adult dogs, for four days and four nights. <laughs> four days, four nights straight, without stopping, and they, uh, the dogs fell in love and they had puppies, so they had championship dogs. Here we go, 1969 for GP and the UG. <laughs> I was always a big, big fan of. 
was Neil Diamond. Yeah. He had recorded the song and had a great hit with this one, so we put it on our very first album, the Woman Woman album. It's called Kentucky Woman Singing. first recordings throughout um, particularly the first and second albums 
And, uh, you know, he brought us a lot of great memories. For you too, I'm sure. I mean, I have memories of being in a hotel room along the way someplace, and I heard a knock at the door, and I went and opened the door, and there was Len. I said, I was surprised. I said, what are you doing here? And he said, well, I heard you were staying at the same hotel, so I thought I'd come and say hello. So kind of a cool thing. He walked in and picked up my 58 Stratocaster and started playing it. Just things like that. We were working in a club in uh, uh, Tempe, Arizona. It was called Mr. Lucky's, and they had a, uh, a country venue. I think that was upstairs. We were downstairs in the pop venue, and we finished sound check. I went upstairs and I heard my name shouted across the way. It was Glenn. He said, "Come with me." He says, uh, "Let's let's go for a ride." So we went and got in his brand new uh, Corvette Stingray and blasted around, you know, the Phoenix area. It's just just those good memories. Um, and he recorded a song that we loved and uh, I still love. Wish I had the hit with it. It was on our first album, but a beautiful song. And we celebrate Glenn with this by the time I get to Phoenix. I got, I think, kind of a decent little story. I was working in San Diego 
1966. Well, actually, I graduated from high school in 1960. My age is? 75. <laughs> it will be 75 on October 17th. I call it 1525. <laughs> You're welcome to use it, it doesn't sound so big. You know? Anyway, I was working in San Diego all of those years and trying to plot a scheme, you know, to make some records, get out in the world, you know, come to places like the Strand, <laughs> and travel throughout New Jersey. You know? That was one of my, uh, you know, life's dreams, actually. In fact, it's really the truth, you know. I wanted to go out and travel around the world, make records, have fun, and hopefully in, in the process make some money as well and you know, make a career out of it. And you folks helped us to do that. So it was 1966 and I'd been working in a group called the Outcasts. We were a good band. We had bass, drums, and guitar, and I had a keyboard and a B3 organ. And we played Beatles and Stones and rock and roll of all kinds and R&B and things like that. And we uh, had a, a great following in San Diego. But I thought, you know, I'd really like to go to New Jersey. I'd really like to go. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd like to do it with some sort of impact, you know. So anyway, I started thinking and thinking and thinking, and then I then I learned this uh, uh, bit of uh, information that had to do with how many records were being released out to the radio stations, and there were between four and five hundred every month. Now remember, we had a top forty on radio, right? That's it, top forty, and maybe ten of those were going to change. So I figured, uh, you know. And, how do you get on that? Maybe if we have a visual image, something that somebody might look at the record cover, if we can get a picture on the record cover, that was always an if in the beginning, uh, then maybe somebody will go, that looks great, I wonder what that record sounds like. So I fought with the record company when we finally you know, got, got things underway, and they said, well, we don't do that for new groups. We don't put pictures on records and things. But I'll tell you what, um, mm -hmm. And we argued and argued, went back and forth. And finally, they relented and they said, okay, they liked our outfits, they liked the whole idea of it all. So they put a picture on our first record. And uh, it went out uh, to a place in Columbus, Ohio. And there was a Columbus and Columbians here. Yeah. Uh, and this guy was a program director, uh, disc jockey, and he was a Civil War historian. So he looked at the picture. And he said, great picture. This is really authentic. It was sepia tone. It was like, so he said, hmm, I wonder what this record sounds like. So he played it. He liked it. He put it on his station as a pick to click, as some of them call it. Excuse me. And um, I'm making a mess on this page. And uh, it went to number one in Columbus, Ohio. So in Cleveland, there was this office of Columbia Records, and they saw that. They called me in San Diego, and they said, we're bringing the band to uh, Cleveland, we're going to put you to work in a club called Otto's Grotto. <laughs> cool little club, it was in the basement of the Sheridan Hotel, and it was kind of the hit place to go there in Cleveland. It was February, no, it was December. It's December, January. Anyway, it was dead of winter, cold of the heck. Daytime, we would go out, and we'd drive to these radio stations, and we'd meet the people, and uh, shake hands, and that was the first time in the car that I heard our record on the air. Um, you guys made this a huge, huge, huge hit record. It went to number four on the national charts and, and stayed there three weeks. Then it went to number three and stayed there for three weeks. And then it started its gradual descent. But you guys paid, what, 49 cents? <laughs> and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> because a million and a half of them went over the counter. At this point, it's at 16 million just because of folks like you. So thank you again very much. My favorite woman woman. Have you got cheese on your
It's called Home. And by the way, welcome home. 